amigos? Did I never tell you about the time I almost got married to the daughter of a big general in Mexico City? Well, if you haven't, it's not your fault, Pancho. You told me... Fernandez Gutierrez de Sala y Gonzalez is the greatest love maker from all Mexico. I know. We know all about that, Pancho. But what about the general's daughter? Was she good looking? Good looking? Senor Ken? She was the most beautiful senorita in the whole country. With red lips and beautiful eyes. I was going to marry with her, too. <clears throat> For what? I meet her mother. You should have seen her. She good looking, too? Big, like the female battleship. She told me when I get married to Carmencita, we all have to live together in the General's Rancho. Caramba! I run plenty fast. Uh, what happened then? Go ahead and tell us the rest of the story. Well, I told my that as long as I live, I'll be the old maid. <laughs> you know, Pancho, I seem to have the same trouble. I don't dare stay in one place very long either on account of my fourth wife catching me and wanting some money. <laughs> that, when it comes to women, why, they go their way. And, and I... you follow them. Uh-uh, senor, you should not laugh. Remember, he who laughs last should not live in glass houses. When the right senorita she come along, you will go around in one big circle, too. Maybe you're right, Pancho. Uh. Hey, what's that, fellas? Something wrong there. Hey, let's take a look. Hey, he's hurt pretty bad. Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like somebody hit him on the head with a gun barrel. Go get that canteen, Panhandle. Hurry it up. Come on, Pancho, give me a hand here. Come on. Lift him up a little, Pancho. Now pour a handful of water there. Take up. Find the back here, Pancho. Oh, that's too ah, bad. I knew I'd find it. No, I'd find it. Now, take it easy, old man. You're gonna be all right. I better give him a little more water there. Thought you killed me. No, no. Don't push me off cliff. When I get back to crap trees, I will tell what I know. I... Uh, we ought to get a doctor for him. Say, that crab tree he mentioned must be the fuck of Blue Mesa. Let's take him to crab trees, then. Maybe he'll know him. Come on, let's go. What? Bye. Deep in one's heart, friends never part. No trails may lead them astray. But there'll come a day. These friends will stray Together forever again Get along, my pal You're a heading for your home to roll For your saddle days are over And you're gonna grazing clover Oh, pal, my pal Such a friend You'll be, you'll see me through both thick and thin. Many stampede herds we battle, many lonely trails we travel. Oh, pal, my pal, oh, pal, now get along, oh, friend. You're on a trail I near the end. Now get along, a horse. My heart will feel your loss, and this memory I'll keep as long as my heart beats. So, oh friend, though I'll miss you plenty, pal, there'll come a time we shall meet stop up. It. Stop it! Swing, if you don't stop making so much noise, I'll fire you! Why, I was only trying to entertain your guest, Mr. Cantree. It isn't Slim's fault. Dr. Floto and I asked him to play and sing for us. That's right. Well, I don't care who put him up to it. His yowling gets on my nerves. 
And if you and Baron Starhawk don't like the way I run my place, get out. Nobody'd ask you to come here in the first place. Maybe you would like me to look at your foot once more, Mr. Crabtree. Perhaps it is causing you much pain, yes? I've had rheumatism before and never needed no quack doctor to tell me whether I had pain or not. You mistake my calling, sir. I'm an international archaeologist. I'm a doctor of science. Well, doctors are the same to me. Go on, get to bed. Howdy, men. Take it easy, Pat Hill. It's Dr. Wall. He appears to be wounded. Where did you find him? About ten miles back up the trail. Anybody here know him? Why, yes. He's one of the archaeologists that's staying here. Well, let's get him in the house, boys. Come on. You're not going to take him in there. The man's badly hurt, sir. Let me examine him. I know something about surgery. Good. I was wondering where we'd find a doctor. He was trying to tell us who'd pushed him off the cliff when he passed out. When he comes to, he may be able to explain everything. I'll do my best. I'll need some hot water and bandages. I'll get them. You ain't going to do nothing of the kind. I ain't never seen you before, and I don't want you prowling around my store. Why, the man may be dying. Well, I don't want him dying around here. Mm, all right, Slim. Show him where to get him. Thanks. I beg your pardon, miss. Well, I should think so. It's a wonder you wouldn't look where you're going. Miss, this place is not open for business right now. My uncle happens to own the post. Slim. Maybe I am wrong about running around the trading post here. You get the stuff. Yeah, sure. Dr. Wall is not seriously injured. He is suffering from a slight concussion caused by the fall, but he will be completely recovered within a few days. What happened to the doctor? I saw him yesterday riding along near my ranch, and about 200 yards behind him... Shut was... up! Who cares what you saw? Put it down there. Thank you. Take it easy, Doctor. No, take it easy. Let me go. Let me go. I know who you are. I'll fool you. My country comes first. Take it easy, Doctor. Not to a wall. Let me go. You've got to a wall. You're with friends now. Just relax. Tomorrow you can talk. You seem to have lost your interest in the Doctor's discovery, Baron Starko. Or perhaps you are the only one who wants to hear about it. Uh, I was only concerned about the patient. It's, it's located near the town of Mountain View. You go up the canyon, past the Morgan's Ranch. I'm Lady Morgan, Doctor. You say the cave is near my ranch? Where is it? How do you get there? It's, it's very funny. No one's ever found the cave before. You go up the canyon, and then you turn to the right. And when you get to Morgan's right. Right, right, right. 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 Right.
He's dead. Right through the heart with a knife. Apparently someone in this room didn't want him to talk. Are you insinuating I'm that? not insinuating anything. Case for the law. I told you not to bring him in here. I've had nothing but bad luck ever since these foreign archaeologists showed up. It'll ruin my business. You better go for the sheriff, Miss Morgan. You're the only one in this room that's above suspicion. Thank you. Wait. And when you get him, go on home. I don't want you mixed up in any more trouble. Don't touch that knife, Doctor. Nothing in this room must be disturbed till the sheriff gets here. And who are you to take charge of this unfortunate affair? Ken Baxter from nowhere and headed in the same direction. There's been a man killed here. Till the law proves otherwise, every one of us in this room is a suspect. Can you translate the Indian writing on the knife, Dr. Toto? As an archaeologist, you should be familiar with them. I think so, Sheriff. All those who seek to defile the sacred caves shall find only death. Apparently, Baron Starkov was right in his belief that Dr. Wall's murder was a clear case of Indian vengeance. Undoubtedly, the murderer broke out the glass in that window through the knife which killed the doctor. I don't agree with the Baron, Sheriff. Sounds impossible. Mr. Baxter, you seem determined to prove that one of us is a murderer. Why, well, it's not that. Though. Perhaps the sheriff should investigate you and your two friends a little more thoroughly. I'm perfectly willing to stand an investigation. Before we jump at conclusions, I'd like to see the sheriff take the fingerprints off that knife handle. <laughs> That's impossible. We've all been using the knife. Well, you fellows have been doing a lot of talking. We ain't getting anywhere. But we should finish this investigation and get out of my store. I reckon Hiram's right. I hereby declare this investigation abandoned. All right, Panhandle, you boys will get the horses ready. I'll join you as soon as I talk to Mr. Crabtree. Now, if you want to talk to me, make it snappy. Because I'm going to lock this place up and get away from here where I can have a little peace and quiet. Well, a change of scenery would probably do you good. Now, by the way, where does Letty Morgan live? I ain't going to tell you nothing. Now get out of here before I have your throat out. Yes, sir. Come on, boys. Senor Ken, what's the matter? Which way do we travel? Toward Painted Canyon. I got to find Letty Morgan. Oh, you're crazier than I thought you was. Senor, remember what I told you would happen when the right senorita she come along? Seems to me you was always bragging about being smart, but not taking any gal serious. <laughs> Go ahead, rub it in. But we still got to find Letty Morgan. I got a hunch she's in danger. Senor, if you was me, I'd stay out of this. I smell a mice. Why? What are you getting at, Poncho? The air. She's going to be filled with much of trouble. What makes you say that? Because I saw this bar on the Starkov on the other side of the border about two or three weeks ago. And he was with Big Nick Arden. Who's Big Nick Arden? One tough hombre. Now he worked for Senor Larkin on the Tin Cup Ranch near Mountain View. Where you find him, you find trouble. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Let's go, boys. Bueno. Let's go in and look this place over, boys. We might find out something. Anybody else say I'm wrong? Yeah, there ain't a man in the place with a nerve. You're all yellow. Come on, get up. You ain't hurt. 
that picnic garden. Hmm. Why, you weak-kneed yellow bunch of little puddle frogs? There ain't a real horn. You ain't tough, are you? There ain't a real fighting horn told in the county. Nah, that's just what I thought. You're all afraid. Well, if any of you change your mind, I'll be right here. Shall I kill him in here or take him outside? You kill him. Big Nick belongs to me, Pancho. You mucho loco. I look up on him first. I tell you what we do. We'll flip a coin. When? Heads. Beers. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> it's a nice day, ain't it? What's nice about Oh, we, we, we just make the little joke, senor. It's very funny, no? <laughs> but you said that's not good. Wait a minute. You see that hombre over there? Yeah, what about him? Now, he, he's a very good friend. And one tough hombre. You make the trouble for us and he'll tear you lame from bush. Now, ain't that something? I'll just see how really tough your friend is. So you're tough, huh? Oh, don't pay any attention to my friends. They just like to hear themselves talk. Trying to back down, are you? No. Get up. Come on. Come on, that's it. Come on, snap out of it. Come on. Come out of it. Come on. Shake, partner. I reckon you're as tough as your pal said you were. Thanks. I didn't start this fight, you know. <laughs> but you finished it with a good punch, man. Pardon me, stranger. I'm Joe Larkin, owner of the Tin Cup Ranch. I'd like to talk to you. What about? Well, I've got a good job for a fellow like you and a big salary. Sounds interesting. I've been traveling around the country with a couple of pals of mine. Can you use them, too? Well, I don't know. I can only use one man right now. But later on, maybe I can put them to work, too. Uh, I don't... Now, don't you worry about us, Ken. If it's a good job, you take it, because we'll hook up with someone else. Go on over and sit down. Hang around a little bit, be through a minute, and uh, go a little easy on that uh, business. What did you say your name was? I didn't say, but it's Ken Baxter. Now, what about that job? In fact, it might be rather dangerous, but I'm willing to pay accordingly. I don't know that I'm anxious for a job, Larkin. I'm looking for a girl named Letty Morgan. I understand she lives somewhere around Mountain View. Did you ever hear of her? Letty Morgan. Can't say that I have, Ken. I tell you, I'll do a little investigating for you if you want me to. Fine. Now, what do you say? Shall I give you the lowdown? Shoot. I guess a little more trouble wouldn't do me any harm. Amigo, I think no more. Amigo, I'll make Jesus. I went. I don't know. Pancho. You, huh? you got a match, Pancho? I got a very good idea. We get a little fire from the pistola. Oh, Pancho, that's very good. Hey, stop wobbling, will you? Hey, Josh. Josh, a minute. 
It seems to me I could do this a whole lot safer. Let's see, I can put this here. Yeah, that'll be all right. All right, shoot! Hey, you got a shotgun? Say, that's pretty good shooting. Thanks, Pancho. Thanks. Did they not tell you, Senor Panhandle, I'm the best shoots in all Mexico? You're right, you're right, That's pretty good shooting, my friend. You ain't seen nothing yet. Wait, wait, wait. wait a minute. How'd you like to put your guns to work? You mean there's trouble? You said it. A couple of good gunslingers would be a great help to me. Senor, you have just hired two of the best vaqueros in all the world. Yeah, and don't you worry about the salary either. Thanks. Get yourself ready and we'll leave pronto. The Tin Cup Ranch never had any trouble over that strip of land until I built a lion shack on it. And the Lazy Y claimed they owned it and ran my men off. Then my job is to get possession of the property and hang on to it, is that right? Right. And it isn't going to be a cinch. Two of my men were pretty badly shot up trying to do the same thing. But you being a stranger, you ought to be able to get in there some way and then take possession of it. I'll make out all right. You come out the shack in the morning, everything will be arranged for you to move in. Fine. So long, Mr. Baxter. So long. Oh, oh, Senor, we have looked for you. We just want to tell you that we have accepted the offer of work. Where? Who for? Uh, oh, we forgot to ask, but he was a nice young fellow, though. Yeah. Uh, drop over and see us sometime. See you anytime. Bud, if Baron Starkoff shows up looking for me, send him out to my ranch. Good evening, Dr. Stockholm. Good evening. And it is a very lovely evening, too. How did you get here? By the very simple process of following you. Interesting cave, isn't it? Oh, don't tell me the ancient Indians made this very clever doorway. What do you want here, anyhow? The same thing you do, my dear Baron. You see, your theory that Dr. Wall was murdered by some member of an ancient Indian tribe might have satisfied those stupid westerns, but it was too thin for me. Especially since I know that you were absent from the trading post the day the doctor was found on the trail, injured and out of his head. You're a smart man, Dr. Floto. Very. Perhaps a little bit too smart for your own good. I'm not afraid of your threats, Baron. And it won't do us any good to fight each other. Our respective governments sent us out for the same reason. If we work together, we will share the reward. Otherwise, Dr. Wall's great discovery may become known, in which case the United States will make sure that no other country will share in it. You're shrewd, Dr. Floto. And I'm forced to agree with you. Come, 
We must find out who has taken possession of the cabin. Otherwise, you know, our secret is not safe. After you, sir. You're late, Baron. What's the delay? Many things have delayed me, Larkin. Many. I suppose you realize that people unfavorable to our cause have taken possession of the line cabin. I certainly do, but how did you find out? Somebody tried to shoot me as I rode up to the cave. They didn't see you go in? No. I was afraid to surprise them by using the trap door. You used your head then, Baron. If you'd failed to get rid of them, they would have been on to our secret. But things will be operating smoothly after tomorrow. I've hired a gun-fighting stranger to take over the cabin for us. Did you tell him why we wanted it? I am not that dumb. He's a tough-fighting hombre, and I'm betting he'll have possession of the cabin by noon tomorrow. Good. However, we'll go out in the morning and make sure he does not fail us. Right. For the love of Mike! What are you two troublemakers doing here? Oh, we're, we're guarding this strip of land. You what? What? Uh, we were hired to uh, keep the hombres away from this cabin. Panhandle just shot a strange vaquero a minute ago. Yeah, I know. The strange vaquero you shot at happened to be me. You mean we was hired to keep you away? It looks that way. Not as hired to run you off. Oh, well, then we're quitting. Sure, this place is for what you call spooks anyway. What do you mean, spooks, Pancho? Mm, just that. Last night we hear some very strange noise. Look like she come from underneath the floor. Then, pretty soon we hear screams like some man should get killed. Yeah, and some of them noises sound like they was coming up through the fireplace there. Yes. Yeah? Let's give it a look. Just what I thought. That's a phony fireplace. Hey, a match, can man. Give that thing a look. That's right, Poncho. Oh, this is easy. Come on. Brrrr. <laughs> 
This place gives me the creeps. Uh, say, Senor, don't you think it is better if I go back to the cabin and make sure nobody bothers us? No, you stay right here. Right here. Hello there. What's that? No wonder Dr. Wall was excited about finding this cave. That's a heliometer. He didn't guess well here. Is that pump running somewhere? Uh, what kind of stuff is this helium? It's a non-explosive gas used by the government and airships. Against the law to sell it to any other country. Now this cave's right near the border. I'll bet you anything they're piping it over the line. Let's follow up, see what it leads to. When? Hey, Ken! Look! What do you suppose that is? Looks like an Indian buried up there. Come on, let's find out. Go on and take a look, Panhill. See what that is. What is the matter? It's stuck. They're thrown on and there's a knife stuck in them. Let me take a look. Please. Say, ain't that the same kind of knife that was used to kill Dr. Wall? We call a turn that time, Pat Hill. Well, this time we're going to find out who used it. Say, I got a hunch this has got something to do with that helium. Well, hold this, Pancho. I want to see his paint first. All right, let's go. And what's he doing in this cabin? Well, he's Ken Baxter, a pal of ours. Uh, Senor Jim, uh, we didn't know that when we started to work for you, we have to fight him. Which means we're quitting. Yeah. Well, put your hands up and start moving, all of you. Come on. Ken's fault, Miss Morgan. You see, he hired out to get this property for Joe Larkin. This strip of land is part of the ranch that my father homesteaded many years ago, Mr. Baxter. I'm asking you and your men to leave here at once. I'm sorry for Watergan. I didn't know I'd be fighting you when I went to work for Joe Larkin. Well, your future actions will speak for themselves. Come on, Jim. Michael will leave you. Miss Morgan! Something I forgot to ask you. What is it? Will you marry me? I should say not. Well, no harm in asking. Come 
Come on, boys, we're going. Come on, Tarzan! Come on! Come on, boy! Come on! That's the three men that picked up in behind for dead. You would have to pick him one of them. You stay here, Baron. So you double crossed me, huh? You did the double crossing, Larkin. Hired me to fight Letty Morgan when you knew I come to Mountain View looking for her. Hey, Pancho. I'll toss you to see which one of us plugs him. With pleasure, amigo. <laughs> I'll do my own fighting, boys. Now listen, Larkin. I'm throwing in with the Morgan outfit. You get back to your ranch, you stay on it. Be a whole lot more healthy for you. Sally? Hey, Ken. How come you didn't tell Lenny Morgan about the cave under her shack? The few things I want to find out first. Perhaps we better pay the senorita a little visit, no? I think that's a good idea. Come on, boys. What did you learn? Not very much. But I don't think any of them are wise. Ha! <laughs> what do these Westerners know of helium? Well, we can't take any more chances. Our best plan is to go to the Morgan Ranch and try and buy that strip of land with a cave on it. If we don't get this trouble settled around here pretty soon, the law will start investigating and then we'll all lose out. I promised my government that you would supply them with helium, Mr. Larkin. If you fail, it means disgrace for me. And undoubtedly death for you. You're not dealing with a dumb foreigner like Dr. Flodo. Remember that, Baron. Go back to the range and get your car. I'll meet you in town. One of the harbors. Yes, sir. Ooh. Hello, folks. Hello, Hello, Uncle. I come over to you. Well, ain't you glad to see me, Letty? I don't know that I am, Uncle Hiram. After the way you treated me in Blue Mesa. Oh, Johnny, I didn't mean nothing. I've been a sick man. Peace and quiet, that's what I need. This place just fills the bill. We haven't room for you, Uncle Hiram. I'm sorry. You ain't got nothing to say about it, Jim Morgan. I'm staying here, and that's that. Nice, f peaceful place you got here, Letty. I'm going to be plumb contented. Morgan, folks. Darn you, Ken Baxter. I left Blue Mesa on your account. Seeing you don't fill me with any great happiness either, Mr. Crabtree. Why, What I do you want, Mr. Baxter? Well, you see, Miss Morgan, I quit riding for Joe Larkin yesterday. Now I'm plumb anxious to start riding for the Lazy Y. And besides, he's got something very important to tell you. He discovered if you hire this troublemaker, Letty, I'll leave the ranch. If I could depend on that, I would hire him. But Good afternoon, Miss Morgan. I rode over to make a peace offering to you. Peace? Well, there ain't no such thing anymore. Well, this is worse than Blue Mesa. 
What is your offer, Mr. Larkin? I'll pay you $5,000 cash for a clear deed to that strip of land we've been fighting over. You're wasting your breath. This property is not for sale. I think you're all wasting your breath. I don't think any of you own that property. Because an old Tom Morgan homestead at this ranch 20 years ago, he leased that piece from the government because it had water on it. I'll talk to you about that job later, Miss Morgan. Come on, boys. over my offer, Miss Morgan. If you change your mind, let me know. Do you suppose they believed what you said? Why well, shouldn't they believe it? When I talk, it means something. Jim. You ride into town and look up the records on that strip of land. I'll take Uncle Hiram with me, and I'll keep everyone away until I hear from you. You ain't taking me nowhere, Letty. I'm heading back for Blue Mesa as quick as I can get my rig hooked up. Hurry into town. Mike's at the shack, so I won't be alone. Crabtree was right. There's been an error in recording that strip of land. And it is open to filing. Come on, let's ride. We haven't got a minute to lose. Hey, you gonna try to file on it yourself? Maybe. There's something a whole lot more important to take care of right now. This will force the showdown I've been looking for. Come on. He's running our horses off, boys. But let's go back and get him. No, we haven't got time for that. Come on, let's find him.
up, Ken. Not if I know it, Jane. Well, you can get out of four, huh? Think of the line. Well, get out. Hurry it up. I'm Give me break. time for this leg, no? It's your leg. Well, I take it easy there. No, you can't. Get out! Come on! Come on. Come on.
fighting for. I've already staked on this land. You what? You heard me. Two Morgan. Larkin. Disarm them. I'll keep them here while you change the location notice and ride into the recorder's office. Perhaps we have something to say about that, Senor Starkov. Not that gun! Good work, Sheriff. Thanks. Take your hands out of your pocket. Say, who is this man, Sheriff? That's Chen Baxter of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. That's right, Norman. Sheriff, did you check the knife? I certainly did, Ken. And the fingerprints on it. Match the one stock off left on the steering wheel of the car just outside of the other entrance of the cave. What difference does it make? This knife was used to kill Dr. Floto. His body is in the cave beneath this cabin where all your helium gas equipment is set up. Well, what are you holding me for? I had the sheriff check all your fingerprints in the book of records in the land office. When these are compared with the prints left on the machine in the cave, my case will be complete. Both you and Starkoff will face government charges of espionage as well as for the murder of Dr. Frodo and Dr. Wall. How come you managed to get the goods on them, Ken? When Dr. Wall was killed, I knew someone in the room did it. Because the glass from the broken window fell outside. Whoever smashed that window was inside at the time. Then Dr. Frodo wanted Wall to talk. Baron Starkoff didn't. That made me suspicious of the Baron, as you all know. Take your men, Sheriff. Pan out, give him a hand. Come on, get going. Come back. Come on, get going. I'm back here. Well, I guess that finishes my job. You know, Miss Morgan, I stake this land in your name, but you better go to town and record mm -hmm. as soon as possible. I'm so sorry for the way I've acted, and thanks for everything. And that's all right. Miss Morgan. Yes? Will you do something for me? Oh, yes. Will you marry me? Now there is going to be trouble. Ha! You said it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.